So here we have a collection uh, of web servers. This is uh, access logs, um, you know, standard kind of things that you'd see in access log, request rate, uh, HTTP status codes, kind of like the non-200, um, you know, error codes. Uh, what's unique about this dashboard and unique about Scalar is we're able to kind of derive these, these metric style uh, dashboards on the fly from raw log files, uh, which allows us to kind of drill down on any of the graphs and get kind of more details um, on kind of what's going on here. So for example, I'll look at these non-2xx responses um, and what immediately is kind of shown to me is, uh, you know, we're looking at our access logs across all server hosts, but just error codes in the 500 error range. Um, you know, I've got full access to kind of all the fields that our parser was able to extract from the log files, uh, which means if I'm not really sure what's kind of causing these spikes going on the main screen, um, you know, let's say I wanted to kind of highlight this spike, uh, just zoom to selection. Um, you know, the graph is immediately updated. We've got an overlay of five, four, and 300 errors. Um, but if I wanted to kind of get an idea of, of what's going on kind of in my, in my network, what I can do is come over to the left nav and start scrolling through here to see if anything sort of jumps out at me. Um, so again, these are all the fields that our parser was able to extract from kind of these various log messages. So if I started the IP field, I noticed, wow, it looks like one IP address is thrown kind of the majority of these errors. Um, you know, there seems to be a bunch of related IP addresses that are throwing a bunch of 500 errors as well. Maybe we've got some sort of DDoS attack going on, and that's something I'd like to kind of investigate. Uh, it's as simple as clicking on the data. That's kind of the general theme of the product is everything is accessed uh, easily by just kind of clicking with the mouse. So if I were to click on this, um, you know, without me doing anything, the uh, you know, IP address, you know, this 33.201 is, is appended to the query. The graph's updated immediately, and again, um, this left nav is updated. Let's say I wanted to kind of drill down uh, even further. Um, let's go look at server host. Um, and I can say, wow, it looks like backend three is throwing the majority of these errors. So let me go ahead and append that to my search. And again, kind of everything happens in, in near real time. So, you know, this graph is, is somewhat interesting to me, but I actually want to look at some of the underlying data and get a little more granular with the details. So what I can do is flip around and uh, kind of view the, the raw log files. Um, and so what we've got here is kind of the ability to, to infinitely scroll through um, you know, the, the, the log messages, um, you know, what's nice about this is, you know, it's basically as fast as if you were kind of directly logged into to one specific server. But again, this is kind of a filtered search. Um, this actually is just one specific server, but just to kind of prove myself, I'll, I'll remove that. And now we're looking at, you know, again, access logs, all server hosts um, with a couple other filters, and you're still kind of scrolling through here uh, quite quickly. Um, a couple other things that I can kind of show on this page. Uh, one is if we were to click on a message, you can, uh, you know, see kind of more details uh, around the fields in that message if, if that's uh, you know, valuable to you. One of the cool tools uh, or kind of abilities is let's say this is a very filtered message. Let's say we've only got our filtered query. This is, um, uh, so let's say this is a very filtered query um, and we've only got three or four messages showing here. And I wanted to see kind of what was going on before and after uh, you know, that, that log kind of uh, was written. Um, I can click this see an original log button and that immediately takes us out of this filtered search and kind of to that, that original log file to see what was going on and get some context. Um, you can also do things like highlighting text. So let's say I wanted to kind of do a new search for this number. Uh, maybe it's a, you know, a customer ID and I want to just see kind of what's going on with that customer ID or if I wanted to ex exclude that customer or, you know, add that to kind of my, my filtered query. Uh, one of the other cool things about the product is um, looking at our distribution view. So, uh, for example, I happen to note this column is what we've labeled the, the bytes field over here, uh, and that's actually the response size. And I've noticed there seems to be a pretty broad distribution of response sizes here. Here's a 27K response size. Here's a 11K response size. Uh, there's probably some, some larger ones down here. Here's 122K response size. And I want to see what that distribution looks like across all of my messages. Um, so what I do is go to the bytes field, click on kind of distribution view, and now I get a distribution of response sizes. So you see there's a bunch around 10K and a couple around 100K. Um, this is only matching 313 messages uh, to give you kind of a sense of performance. Um, what I'll do is start, start pulling out uh, some of my filters on here. You can see the graph updating in real time. You see the le left nav update immediately. I'll bump this out to a three-day time period to again give you kind of a performance sense. Again, the graph updated, updated immediately. The left nav is updated in kind of less than a second. And now we've matched over 45 million messages, but all that took was, you know, a second or two to kind of load all that data. Uh, so it kind of speaks to kind of how interactive the product can be and how easy it is uh, to kind of get up to speed, you know, because of some of the performance and especially when you're sending, uh, you know, hundreds of gigabytes or terabytes per day, um, you know, running a simple uh, query could take, you know, minutes, uh, you know, if not hours in, in other products. 
A um, couple other things that I will kind of touch upon here quickly. Uh, one other dashboard type of view that we have that we actually call a report is basically an aggregated count of uh, certain fields. Uh, so for example, we're looking at uh, URL paths and their related HTTP status codes. Uh, so you know, we've got report, homepage dashboard, so on and so forth. Um, you know, as I had mentioned, uh, you know, everything is, is accessed by kind of clicking around with the mouse. Um, so, you know, I noticed that the dashboard page is throwing a ton of 500 errors, so I can kind of click on that and um, immediately, uh, you know, we're taken to that specific, uh, you know, dashboard view. I can flip around, look at the raw logs. Uh, we have a live tail capability so you can watch logs coming in in, in near real time um, if that's uh, something of interest. Um, alerting. Uh, so kind of the general uh, kind of overview of alerting is that anything that you can graph, you can set alert on. So for example, this is uh, you know similar alert to kind of uh, what we were just looking at, uh, you know, doing a count of 500 errors uh, and setting a certain threshold and then triggering an alert. Um, we have integrations with HipChat, Slack, PagerDuty, uh, you know, we have webhooks, standard email, um, you know, a lot of capabilities to, to, to set fairly granular alerts. Uh, like I said, this is a simple one. If you want to do more advanced uh, uh, alerting, you could do things like compare uh, 99th percentile CPU utilization to the same time last week and if it crosses a certain threshold, then, then trigger an alert. Um, the last piece I'll kind of touch on here in this uh, demo is Parser. So a very powerful parsing engine. Um, basically, any text-based log format can be ingested and parsed uh, within Scalar. Um, we have something like 20 pre-built parsers, so that you don't really need to do anything with them. But if uh, you know you've customized your JSON or you've got you know custom debugging logs, uh, you know we've built a powerful parsing engine that can kind of handle any of that. And in theory, um, basically what you're doing is you're just identifying kind of the white space around each field and then labeling uh, you know, a field itself and you can kind of test it and build it within the product. Um, you know, we've actually made it so easy that you can click just this uh, ask us to edit for you button and uh, it takes us two or three minutes. We'll build a parser, send it back to you and you are uh, off and running.